What's up everybody? My name is Dustin Wan. I am 32 years old, a professional volleyball player and a member of Team USA. Growing up in Long Beach, California, you would assume that I was playing beach volleyball since I was a child, but that wasn't the case. I wanted nothing to do with the sport. Even though my dad was a former coach, I resisted and resented the thought of playing volleyball. Until fate had it, and all my soccer teammates decided they would try out for the volleyball team, and I decided I would give it a shot as well. I instantly fell in love with the sport, but at the same time, I realized just how bad I was. Luckily, I had a beach partner in my father, who, as a teacher, had the summers off, and so it began every day, waking up, going to the beach, losing to a bunch of old guys, only to wake up the next day, get back to the beach, and lose to a bunch of more old guys. But it was a beautiful struggle, as I slowly started to callous my mind, becoming more determined as ever, and using the losses and failures as fuel. This consistent and passionate grind eventually led me to be recruited by Long Beach State, where I would spend five years becoming an All-American. I had achieved my dream and my goal of becoming a collegiate athlete, and I was ready to move on with my life. But the volleyball world had a different plan for me as I was invited to come try out with the USA national team. With a lot of hard work, determination, and luck, I was able to make the team and take home a gold medal for Team USA. The next progression for me was to continue my career as a professional athlete. Unfortunately, in the US, we don't have a domestic league. And so I packed up my bags and moved to Finland for the next eight months of my life. Fast forward nine years later, and I have spent two years living in Finland, a year in the south of France, in the north of France, a French island, a year all the way down in Brazil, two years in Poland, and this year I found myself in a new country, in Germany. After successfully taking a bronze at World Championships with Team USA, I hopped on a plane with three of my American teammates to begin my new season as a member of the Berlin Recycling Follies. So there's a lot of reasons why I came to Berlin and signed with BR Volleys, but the main one was the championship. The team here has won the last three championships in the Bundesliga, and the standard is not only winning, but championships. The standard, the bare minimum, is championships, and I was so excited to be a part of that culture where there's so much expectations, and with the expectations comes stress and pressure, but I'm a firm believer with that stress and with that pressure, we grow the most. So at the time of recording this, it's May. It's been six months since I've been here. We're in the finals, tied up 1-1, the best of five, and now it's just really getting going. But so far, everything's kind of led up to my expectations. A lot of stress, a lot of pressure, a lot of difficult times and I think for me a lot of time spent reflecting on who I am, who I want to be as a teammate, as a person, and as a player and even though it's been really tough I think I've grown a lot and excited to see what the next week will hold for us as a team. But overall living overseas, being alone, being away from friends, family, really all it is is you by yourself reflecting on how you can be a better volleyball player, how you can be physically stronger, mentally tougher, and how you can bounce back after so many emotional lows because you're just here by yourself and you have to figure out how to get past not only days, weeks, but maybe months of losing, of failure, or just straight ugliness. But I'm a firm believer that there is so much in our control, whether it be our attitude, our actions in any situation, or just our perception, which I believe shapes our reality. And so I'm so excited today as I get to share some of the routines and the habits that I have developed over so many years overseas, being by myself, losing, failing, and overcoming setbacks just the same. In life, 
as well as sports, there's always ebbs and flows. But if we are conscious and mindful in our work, then we can have faith in ourselves in difficult times and know that we're only progressing towards our best self while consistently shedding a lesser version of ourself day after day after day. So let's do this. Are you ready? Day in the life of the best day ever. Good morning or guten morgen from Berlin, Germany. First things first, upon rising, I find my meditation pillow, I sit and I close my eyes and I breathe. I started meditating around six years ago. During the year I spent playing professionally in Brazil. The Brazilian volleyball culture was a stark contrast to what I've experienced playing volleyball in America. I was stressed, there was pressure everywhere, and I really didn't know how to deal with it because there was such a huge language gap between me and my teammates. And so I was just by myself. So I began a mindfulness meditation practice with the goal of developing awareness of my breath, leading to increased focus, decision making, patience, and stress reduction. For me, it's never been about emptying my head of thoughts. It's more about giving my mind a specific job to do. For me, it's focusing on my breath and having the awareness not just to notice when I get distracted, but to be able to bring my attention back to the original job of focusing on the breath. And so the biggest takeaway I felt from my mindful meditation practice has been increasing the space between stimulus and response. Like most people, I still have moments where an intense stimulus, maybe a malicious joke, being yelled at, or physically being hit leads to an instant reaction rather than a calculated, confident, and calm response. And so meditation has seemed to elongate this pause and to help me expand my ability to choose my response rather than react. And I found by increasing the space between stimuli and response, I'm able to maintain my cool longer on the court in times where in the past, most notably in Brazil, I tended to lose my mind and my focus. As athletes, it's within our power and our control to be mindful and recognize that our entire life can be a training ground for presence. And as we continue along our journey, this mindfulness can strengthen our ability to reset and create a new present. A present where our most determined, confident, focused, and highest self resides. And so for my morning meditation, I focus my attention on the sensations of my breathing. Two, when I notice the mind has wandered, I observe it without judgment, without shaming myself, and I return to the breath. And the cycle repeats. Next up after meditation is intention for the day. I love this practice because I get to start my day off with gratitude and abundance. Next I like to set intention and purpose specifically for my training and what I'll focus on. And then lastly some goals or tasks I like to accomplish by the end of the day. So let's get going. Let's move. One of my favorite things in the morning, I just like to move the body, whether it's some active stretching, a little yoga, or today I just did some core. Whatever it may be, I wanna get my body going, I wanna wake myself up and get ready for the day. After some type of movement, it's time to fuel up. It's almost been seven years now since I've been a plant-based athlete. And over those past seven years, I have cut out meat, fish, all types of dairy, and any products coming from animals. With an emphasis on eating foods as close as I can to their whole form. And so my favorite way to start the morning is with a huge green smoothie bowl topped with nuts, berries, and tons of sprouted seeds. Fueling me to absolutely dominate the day. So after I crush this bowl, time to get to the gym and get the first workout done. Usually overseas, we don't have a great strength and conditioning coach, but in Berlin, that is not the case. We have an amazing coach who is always helping us become more intimate and sensitive for our body. 
with uh, a lot of different exercises, turning on the nervous system, turning on the ankles. As you'll see, we do a lot of hand cleans, which in my personal experience is the best lift of all players. And increased speed, increased coordination, and most importantly for those that jump, hand cleans and power cleans have been shown to improve your vertical jump, particularly when compared against other traditional powerlifting exercises. And it's just extremely fun to lift it up only to throw the bar back down again and yell. Ah! Rip out some squats, some other activation exercises, and we are off to morning technical training. Today our coaching staff kept it really simple, just working on float serve reception. For me, it was keeping the ball outside my body and working to hold my platform after every rep so I can see and feel how the angles are coming off my body. Our morning is done, and luckily the big guys were patient enough to wait for me. It's time to grab some lunch in the city. We got the chosen one gracing us for lunch today, one of my German teammates, and we also have Jeff Jendrick, one of the Americans on my team, for a nice little Korean lunch in the heart of Berlin. All vegan, of course, and it's really fun to take my teammates out that aren't vegan and to show them just how colorful, delicious, and tasty plant-based options can be. After some awkward poses and a lot of delicious food, it's time to get back home and time to juice it up. Anyone that follows me on social media knows that I'm a huge fan of juicing. Uh, I try to keep it as simple as possible and juice more vegetables rather than fruit as it's so easy to get a ton of vitamins and minerals. It's also an amazing pick-me-up rather than napping. Um, I like to do a lot of work throughout the day and rather than having a coffee that will mess up my sleep later that night. Along with a green juice, I'm a big fan of turmeric and ginger shots. Of course, can't leave out the black pepper. In my experience as an athlete, this has been the biggest hack to staying healthy over the winter seasons and helping my body stay on top of the constant inflammation. Of course, it's not very delicious. Juicing's checked off my list, and for the remaining of the afternoon, I'll be working on and checking off other micro tasks that correspond with me being the best athlete on the court and the best person off the court. Some of those tasks include writing, afternoon meditation, visualization before training, and of course watching and scouting video. I'm a huge fan of watching video, whether it's watching games of myself and what I'm doing right, what I could be doing better, or, or scouting the opposing team as this is something I have complete control over in my preparation. After a quick visualization at home and a long drive, we're on the east side in our competition gym as we prepare to host our first home game of the finals. Luckily for our jumpers, we kept today relatively easy. A lot of work on serve and pass, and so a lot of technical work for me. Um, again, focusing on keeping my arms out and a little more emphasis on overhead passing for float serves. One of the unique pleasures of playing overseas is playing bagger. This game that almost no one plays in America. It's just a one touch game, one on one. And without a doubt, it is the best way to warm up. Everyone's laughing, everyone's enjoying. And, uh, and it serves as the only opportunity where a uh, libero can actually score a point. Finished practice with a little more reception work. My Polish assistant coach, always with a, a nice sense of humor, bouncing balls off his head, making me move. Uh, really enjoyed working with him. Not only during practice, but after practice where I get a lot of extra reps. Today I'm working not only with Tomasz, but with Linus. Linus is working on his step close, and I'm working on getting a little more lift on the ball and moving him around inside and out. For libero, obviously you gotta be great at serve reception and defense, but something you have to be consistently great is setting. And so there's just always an emphasis on being a better and better setter, and there's always time to work on it. And if you're gonna work hard, if you're gonna work hard consistently, you better recover hard consistently. So after practice, you always find me with a post-workout smoothie, and I'm gonna take my time stretching. Here's uh, what I like to do in my routine move it around, move my body, and if I can, stay in these positions for at least 15 seconds. And if you're gonna bring a smoothie, you better bring enough to share. JC's got a little bit of it. Get those calories on him, he loves it. Gonna put together a little curry, got some garlic, got some broccoli, mushrooms, zucchini, 
gonna cook that with water, add some coconut milk, flavor that with turmeric, cumin, black pepper, put it in a bowl, some kimchi, some, some broccoli sprouts, some hemp seeds, and actually that's not the bowl I want. That's the bowl I want, yeah. And I'm gonna treat myself a little kombucha, we're ready to go. After taking some time to finish the meal, let it settle, have a little ashwagandha tea, and then give my body the love and care it deserves after a day with three trainings, trying to lower the cortisol and get me ready for the best sleep possible. So when I wake up tomorrow, I'm ready to go after it again with everything I have. And as I go to bed, it's just wild to me that 10 years ago, I was wearing a headband, a mustache, and I had no dreams or aspirations at all to play professional volleyball. But here I am, and I'm so grateful for another day to do what I love and the beautiful opportunity to do it a little better than I did yesterday.